Hello, I'm Ron Strickland. This webcast is one of a series in which I'm providing some comments and excerpts from lectures on topics from the courses I teach in literary and cultural studies. Here, I'm going to say some things about the narrative strategies and perspective of F. Scott Fitzgerald's novel, The Great Gatsby. At the end of chapter one of The Great Gatsby, Nick returns home from his dinner party at the home of Tom and Daisy Buchanan, and on the lawn next to his house he sees a man standing. This is his neighbor, J. Gadsby. And as he's about to speak to his neighbor, Nick sees Gadsby stretch out his arm toward a green light on the opposite shore. Gadsby is reaching out toward the light at the end of the dock at Daisy Buchanan's home. As the reader will recognize, this is a very romantic gesture, and it brings Nick up short so he doesn't say anything to his neighbor. In fact, this quality of being a detached and somewhat bemused observer of goings-on is a consistent feature of Nick's character throughout the novel. I want to show you a couple of scenes from a 1974 film of The Great Gatsby that illustrate this point. The first one is a scene from chapter 3 of the novel in which Nick is observing the frequent parties held at his neighbor Jay Gatsby's house all summer long. At least once a fortnight, a corps of caterers came down with several hundred feet of canvas and enough colored lights to make a Christmas tree of Gatsby's enormous garden. neighbor's house through those summer nights. In his enchanted gardens, men and girls came and went like moths, among the whispering and the champagne and the stars. I believe that few people were actually invited to these parties. They just went. They got into automobiles which bore them out to Long Island, and somehow they ended up at Gatsby's door come for the party with a simplicity of heart that was its own ticket of admission. And after that, they conducted themselves according to the rules of behavior associated with an amusement park. Notice how the filmmaker emphasizes a contrast between Nick's calm, rational observations and the craziness of the society represented by the goings-on next door. In Chapter 2, Fitzgerald presents the extramarital relationship between Tom Buchanan and Myrtle Wilson. Chapter 2 introduces a somewhat uncomfortable scene in which Tom and Nick stop at the Wilson's garage, and while Mr. Wilson goes to get some chairs for his guests to sit in, Tom arranges a sexual tryst with Mrs. Wilson, Myrtle, all the while Nick stands on as a kind of uneasy observer of this sordid affair, and also described prominently in this scene 
are the eyes of Dr. T. J. Eckelberg on the billboard outside Wilson's garage. The eyes painted on the billboard represent the eyes of God in a modern industrial society. The faded, ineffectual quality suggested by these painted eyes indicates that in modern industrial society traditional morality has been superseded and forgotten. You may have noticed that at the end of that previous clip the camera view fades from perspective of Nick's eyes to the eyes on the billboard overlooking the road by Wilson's garage. Now I want to show you a clip in which Nick is uncomfortably observing this relationship between Tom Buchanan and Myrtle Wilson. About halfway between the two eggs and New York, the motor road hastily joins the railroad and runs beside it for a short distance presided over by the eyes of Dr. T. J. Eckelberg, set there by some wild wag of an oculist to fatten his practice in the borough of Queens. This desolate area is a valley of ashes, a fantastic farm where ashes grow like wheat. to meet my girl. Wilson! Wilson! Wilson, old man. How's business? Can't complain. When are you going to sell me that car? Next week. I've got my man working on it now. He works a little slow, don't he? No, as a matter of fact, he doesn't. If you're not interested in buying it, I'm sure that I can find someone who is. I didn't mean that. I, I just meant that. Well, I figure I could fix it up and turn a profit. Myrtle Wilson, this is Nick Carraway. Nick, Mr. and Mrs. Wilson. Why don't you get some chairs so someone can sit down? Oh, sure. sure that my man stays right on it. Nick, Mrs. Wilson, nice to see you. I like the way this film dramatizes Nick's discomfort at being made an unwilling witness to the infidelity of his cousin Daisy's husband. This is a situation that Nick finds himself in repeatedly throughout the novel, and Fitzgerald draws a sharp contrast between the selfishness and impurity of the kinds of relationships between men and women that we see in the upper class and the pure, innocent emotion represented by Gadsby's desire for Daisy. Although Gadsby's desire is also arguably tainted with greed and confused with the desire for social power as well, at one point he describes Daisy's voice as sounding like money. With that, I'll conclude this webcast. But if you have questions or comments, send me an email. <laughs> <laughs>